Hi, Rice here. We're going to learn how to model this uh, physics data so that we can better understand how things should happen in the physics world. I'm going to use some brute force calculus on the computer and make sure that everything comes out in a way that shows us what the patterns should be so that if we run an experiment we can see if they're matching our expectations or not. So, first thing, let's take a look at this spreadsheet. Uh, you can see that over here I've got some sections already sort of set up for myself just to save us some time. And then I've got here some constants, a few different types of things. Since we're talking about thermal conductivity in this lab specifically, I've got the length of my thermal conductor, the diameter of my thermal conductor, which happens to be a 3 16 inch rod. Uh, then I can calculate the area here, and I know my units will be in meters squared, but I don't want to include units in the cell. And then I've got the thermal conductivity for aluminum and steel, and then a few things about the beaker that I'm using this thermal conductor to warm up. So just from that data, we're going to go with uh, figuring out a little bit more in this model. So first things first, we need to figure out the area, the cross-sectional area of these thermal conductors. And that we can figure out by doing pi r squared. And in Excel, I want Excel to do the work for me. So I'm going to say equals pi. And then I've got a little pi function like this. And then I can do my radius squared, which would be pretty conveniently my diameter divided by 2 like that, and then I need to have that squared. So I'm gonna do raised to the second, whoops, like that. Now, uh, in order to keep my order of operations correct, I'm just gonna throw in as many parentheses as necessary. So there we go. We have a, a cross-sectional area for our conductor. And we've got a few things that play out nicely here. But if I wanna figure out the temperature of the cool water bath and how much that goes up, I'm going to make a model that shows me what the temperature of a cool water bath will be doing after a certain amount of time. And so I'm going to use the thermal conductivity equation to make that happen. And then we're going to substitute in MCAT. And when you do that, it's a little tricky because there's the delta T from the hot water bath. How much does the hot water bath's temperature go up? And there's the delta T, which is the temperature difference on both sides of the conductor. So we've got a couple big delta T's. We've also got this little delta T, which is how much time has passed. Uh, but when we take a look at this equation, we can rearrange the whole thing so that it fits this model. And that is going to give us, whoops, that'll give us our delta T, the temperature change for the bath. So we're just going to try and build an equation here that'll give us that. So what I'm going to do is say, let's go to this thing for the aluminum. And we want to figure out how this is going to turn out. We're going to give, we're going to have Excel do some work for us. We're going to say, take the temperature that you were before and add that delta T to it. So now we've got to add in a whole section that's our delta T. So first thing, let's talk about our numerator in this little fraction that we're going to do. And we saw from the equation that it's the thermal conductivity times the cross-sectional area times the amount of time that passed times the delta T of the conductor. So we've got to fit all that into our numerator. So first up is our thermal conductivity. I'm going to do this, which is K12. That's the thermal conductivity for aluminum. And I'm going to put it F4, so I've got dollar signs. That fixes it on that cell always, and it won't change. Then that's multiplied by the cross-sectional area, another thing that I can fix. And then I've got a few more properties that I'm multiplying. The delta T is always going to be 60 seconds for me, so I'm going to put in 60. Whoops, not 608. 60. And then I'm also going to put in the delta T of the conductor. So this is an interesting thing. That's the temperature difference between the bath and the other piece. And since we know the other, the hot water bath is always at 100, it's boiling water, I can say here that's 100 minus whatever the temperature was when this game started. So here we've got, there's our delta T of the conductor all packaged away. And I'm going to close that off so that that's my whole numerator. Now divide that by a few other things. That'll be my mass of water that I'm heating up, and I want that to stay fixed and the specific heat of the water, which I'd like to stay fixed, and then the length of the conductor, which I'd also like to stay fixed. We've got a bunch of constants in the bottom, and that's totally fine. Close up our parentheses, and here we go. Over 60 seconds for aluminum, the temperature of that hot water, of the cold water bath, sorry, is gonna go up by about 0.4 degrees. And if I wanna take this pattern and continue it on, I can just hover over this little black dot and drag it down. So it should keep that pattern going and keep the same calculation happening all the way down. So you can see that over time, my temperature is going to go up fairly significantly, up to about 66 degrees. 
Now, if I play the same game over here with steel, I can use almost completely the same equation. I've got almost all the same things referenced, but instead of the aluminum K, or the aluminum K12, I'm gonna go drag this down to steel K14. And so now I've got this. You see it's a lot less effective, which makes sense because the thermal conductivity is a lot less. It's about a fifth. So if I drag this down, you can see this pattern occurs also, and my temperature changed a lot less. So now if I want to make sense of what's going on here, I can graph these three things together. So I'll select all this data, and Excel will try and guess how to graph, and hopefully it'll guess right. So I can do an insert scatter plot like this, always just the data points, and there we go. We've got a graph showing what's going on over this time period. You can see the temperature goes up for aluminum. And if we wanted to, we could extend this down a whole lot further and see how this approaches, how this asymptotically approaches the uh, 100 degrees that the hot water bath is. It'll take a long time to get there and it'll never quite make it because of the way that it's set up in math world. In physics world, they would eventually find an equilibrium temperature between the two. But here we've got a graph for one piece of it. Now, the other thing that I want to look at is not just this graph, and I should label all my axes, and that'd be in layout and, and format and all those things. I can play with that graph later. The other piece that I want to do is look at my heat flow at various temperatures. So I'm going to look at the heat flow at 80, 79, 78, this whole pattern all the way down. I want to look at it for each individual degree all the way down to a zero degree difference. To where it's completely the same thing. Now to find the heat flow you can see from the from the box it's the flow rate it's that ratio that's just based on the thermal conductivity equation the Q over T ratio is what I want to have solved for in that cell and that's going to be based on a few constants which will make the slope of my line and then the delta T of the conductor will be like my X value so all I need to do is build an equation that fits that model and I can do that pretty easily in Excel too. So equals, and then I don't need to have this recursive. It's not dependent on anything else. It's just these values that I'm putting together. So first up, I need to have the K value. So K values in there, hit F4, and then multiply that by the area. So the area is here, and I want that to be fixed. And then I'm multiplying that by the other piece of the numerator is gonna be the delta T of the conductor. So that I'm just gonna leave at F3. I don't wanna do the double dollar sign trick so that it stays fixed. I want that to move as I go through the calculation. Then I'm going to divide by the length of the conductor, which is this right here, and I do want that to stay fixed, so there we go. And now I've got this value, and it will change as we go down through the temperatures, and there we go. We've got this sort of a pattern. We can do the same thing over here for steel, just dragging this over. All the values stayed the same, but I wanted it to go from aluminum to steel's thermal conductivity. And you can see it's a lot less. It's about a fifth this conductive, and so we've got a significantly lower impact in the flow rate. So we bring this on down, and we've got all these values to play with. If we want to, we can graph this data, and that will be no problem. We just do insert another scatter plot like this, and you can see that these are completely linear graphs. Now, the one is a lot bigger than the other. It's totally fine. Uh, but we've got these two graphs that are put together. So that's how you build these graphs. They give you models for what you should expect when you're doing some of these operations, and they're not too hard to build. It takes a little bit of equation work uh, like this, but once you've got your equation work done, all you need to do is build a model in Excel, and we'll show you what you should get. So that's it. Thanks for watching.